Alright, welcome back to Podcast 31 of 2020. I'm your host, Kiev O'Neill. You can follow us on Twitter at The Odds Breakers. Follow us on social media slash The Odds Breakers. This episode is being brought to you by mybookie.ag. For a 50% sign-up bonus, please visit mybookie. Use the promo code The Odds Breakers. Terms and conditions apply. If you'd like to help us out with our costs and sponsor the podcast, we would love to help you out. Please visit theazbreakers.com, click shop, and become a member. For $17.99 a month, you can get my plays and premium plays before the line moves. For $2 more, you can have all that and become a patron subscriber, get the podcast a little bit early, and if nothing else, please visit theazbreakers.com and become a free picks newsletter subscriber. All right. Podcast 31 is all about the NFL season win totals and division previews. So we are almost done with that. After this, we're going to focus a little bit more on college football, and we're going to focus a little bit more on the ponies. But uh, there's some huge races coming up, actually. The Belmont's coming up here, and hopefully we'll bring back some of our Good guess for that. Looks like some college football uh, players are going to be reporting to their schools and camps. So uh, this month, actually, I saw Michigan's going to be on June 15th. So that's a good sign for college football. Real happy about that. And uh, the other sports are kind of starting to figure it out yet. Still a stagnation in the MLB. Although they did just have their draft, which is a good thing, and the Players Association made a proposal for a 89-game season with full prorated share of salary um, and expanded playoffs. The problem is uh, it doesn't seem like the players will take a chunk out of their prorated salary, even though there might not be fans. So... That's kind of where the issues are. The the owners are like, we're losing millions and millions of dollars uh, per game because of the fact that there's going to be no concessions, no ticket sales, no parking fees, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of where the hangups always been here. Let's just hope that uh, they get it together so we can have a little bit of baseball towards the uh, middle to end of the summer here. You know, before we get into our NFL season win totals and division previews, we had a question from a fan, and it's a good question. Very good question. So he gets a free bet, $500 free bet for making a deposit. I'm not sure if it was DraftKings or FanDuel. It was, his name is Chris. And he wants to know the best way to um, use that bet to profit, right? The best way to do it. There's all kinds of ways, obviously. There's, you can bet juice teams, you can bet dogs, you can do something that you really like that might be a season win total or or a future. And uh, what we are limited to is plus 300, but you can do parlays according to what he said. So he came up with the idea to do a two-game staggered parlay where the teams don't play at the same time so he can kind of hedge out of his parlay if he gets them both at plus 110. He was talking about either Korean baseball or most likely Russian table tennis. So uh, not something I know about at all, but it that doesn't matter because it's really, the question is all about the numbers and what you should do. He said... He wants to hedge each game coming back to guarantee a profit, and I completely agree with him. If your free bet allows you to do a parlay, that's the direction you should go. Because even if you take your $500 and you have to lay some juice, meaning minus $200 to guarantee a profit of $250, there's still only 
a 66% chance you're going to win and a 33% chance that you are going to lose that bet. If you decide to go the parlay route, as long as you stagger the games, you can hedge back on the other side and have a guaranteed position in the money. So what you want to look at is you max it up to plus 300. So that's taking about two slight dogs at plus 110 to win outright. All right. So um, that means the $500 bet would pay out $1,500 if you hit both legs in the parlay. So his idea was to use about 280 bucks on the first bet to try and hedge uh, and guarantee some of that money. Now, I have to use minus 130 if it's plus 110. He says that he can do some shopping and possibly get uh, maybe like a 10 or 15 cent difference, maybe a minus 115 or minus 110 instead of having to go minus 130. Um, so definitely <laughs> shop around and find the best potential payout that you can find when going this direction because the minus 130 will add up. Um, so basically, you know, he uses about his example, $280. And so he'll get paid roughly 254 if it's minus 110, 215 all the way down if it's minus 130. The example that he shows is if he loses that bet, he could play larger on the other side because remember, you're getting paid $1,500 off your $500 free bet. So he said he'd be paying roughly $620 to bet the leg two. So that will at least cover his $280 and it would also give him a profit of close to the same if he wins the second leg. Now, if he loses both legs, you add up the 280 to the 620. The money that he lost, I'll just do that real quick, 280 plus 620, $900, and he's still going to clear $600 or so from winning the parlay. It ensures some money. Now, with that example, it wasn't minus 130. That probably would have been more like minus 110 or something like that. I have to assume minus 130 if you're taking plus 110 on both sides. And there's an actual way to find out what your maximum profit would be at a break-even analysis. So you, you, no matter what way you go, there's an equation that shows you exactly how much you can make with zero risk whatsoever it's going to pay out the same no matter what if you win your parlay at the end with all your hedging and it's going to pay if you win your first bet the same and if it's going to pay the same if you win your second bet all right now the easy way to do this is to understand that there's fifteen hundred dollars and there's two bets so you divide that by two you have seven hundred fifty dollars now obviously when you hedge bets you want to hedge to the point where if you lose both hedges you make zero dollars So you have to divide that by two again because you're hedging to make roughly half in a perfect world, and that number is 375. So let's just say you bet 375 at no juice. You lose your bet. Then you have to bet $750 because you have to make your old 375 back, and you uh, win that bet, you're going to make 375 because you still lost your uh, $375 from before, right? And if you lose both bets... You're only in for 375 times 3, which is 1,125 minus 1,500. Well, there's your 375. So um, if there's juice at minus 130, there's an easy kind of way to do it that's not uh, exact. And this is just, you just take the X over 1.3 equals Y, all right? And Y is what you're going to guarantee for profit. So 375 is X, 375 divided by 1.3 equals $288.46. So just doing it quick, that's your uh, max value. And if you go through the equation, it's close. You get like 265 at the end if you win your parlay. But uh, the correct way to do it is called a maximize profit equation. It's roughly... 
taking y, like I said, x over 1.3, that is always going to be y. And then you're going to find out what z is, which is max profit, y plus x bracketed times 1.3 equals z. All right? And the actual equation is 1500 minus z minus x equals y. Well, um, we already know that z, if you do the equation since y equals x over 1.3, z is actually uh, x plus 1.3 or 2.3x. That's what z actually is. So the equation is 1500 minus 2.3x minus x equals x over 1.3. Just like I said, 1,500 minus Z minus Y equals Y. So if you uh, go through those numbers, it comes out to X being 368.62. That's what you have to bet at minus 130, because I'm assuming minus 130 juice. Remember, that's hence the 1.3. That's the decimal odds. And Y equals 283.55. So 283.55 is what you can guarantee um, and maximize the value of your guaranteed bet. It's a guaranteed payout, okay? So 283.55 times 1.3 is 368.62. You lose that bet. You have to add that back to the 283.65 you have 652.26. Now you have to multiply that by 1.3 because you're laying juice. You have 847.94. And if you lose that bet, you have to add it back to the 368.62. And you get $1,216 minus 1500 equals $283 and 40 some cents. So there you go. That is your max break even point for this bet. You can assure yourself that you're going to get $283 no matter which way you go at minus 130. Now that equation gets a lot sweeter if you get that at minus 110. I know I probably bored the shit out of you, so if you want to have any questions about that or talk about that, please feel free to tweet us at the Ozbreakers or message us through the website. All right, without further ado, let's get into NFL season win total. Starting with the AFC North. What a freaking disaster they were last year. Minus Baltimore, of course. This division had the lowly Cincinnati Bengals, the absolutely overhyped Cleveland Browns, and the Pittsburgh Steelers that couldn't even make the playoffs. Couldn't even score many points, actually. Big Ben was gone, of course. But to be honest with you, I think maybe with Big Ben, maybe they get in the playoffs. But I, I this team doesn't have a lot of offensive juggernauts. Let's take a look at this breakdown. The AFC North has to play the NFC East, which is pretty good, actually, and the AFC South. You know, I I guess I would call that I would call that medium easy. I mean, the Jaguars in the South. The uh, the NFC East is obviously pretty weak with the Redskins and the Giants. So that's medium easy, at least. Uh, the Ravens, obviously the best team uh, and the team to beat. Uh, they literally had the best power rating in football last year. I believe even in my power ratings, I had them higher than the Chiefs, um, finishing out close to them. Uh, Lamar Jackson surged, absolutely just surged and proved a lot of people wrong. Heisman quarterbacks do do well in the NFL. In my, in my book, it's, uh, it's Lamar is probably second to Patty Mahomes and Russell Wilson. <sighs> Hard not to put him in the top two, uh, but he's three, I guess. But I, I gotta tell you, uh, these guys can all trade places. It really doesn't matter. 
The Steelers' offense, like I said, ugly, ugly, ugly. Big Ben's coming back. You wonder if he's going to be really rusty. Not a lot of practice opportunities. Cleveland, all the talent in the world, but they made a lot of stupid mistakes, as I pointed out. We'll get more into them. And Cincinnati was downright garbage. And they didn't have any offensive line or or pretty much anything to work with. Also, A.J. Green sitting out really did not help them that much at all either. I expect the Ravens to remain on top of this division. And uh, big potential wild card to Cleveland um, because the beer slamming Baker Mayfield might get it together. The Baltimore Ravens Vegas win total is 11.5. Schedule is easy. At large games versus New England and Houston. Key losses. Defensive tackle Michael Pierce. Inside linebacker Patrick Answazer. And inside linebacker Josh Burns. Defensive ends. Derek Wolf. Or sorry, key additions. Derek Wolf on defensive end. Guard DJ Fluker. Inside linebacker Jake Ryan, who they drafted. Linebacker Patrick Queen. Running back J.K. Dobbins. Defensive line Justin Madubuki and wide receiver Devin Duvernay, linebacker Malik Harrison. All right. Somehow the Ravens achieved greatness last year with kind of a makeshift defense. They lost to Smiths, lost a lot of other guys. But John Harbaugh, I mean, so much credit to that guy. Probably a top three coach in my opinion now. Um, amazing mind. He just kind of figures out how to uh, disrupt teams with pure blitz packages, you know, kind of knows when to do it. Then he'll fake them out by pulling some players back. He doesn't even need to run with great linebackers in the middle for that. A lot of teams rely on their Mike linebacker. So, uh, this team's straight up loaded, uh, having an easy schedule this year is, uh, pretty nice. <laughs> They're at large games are against the new England Patriots without, Tom Brady and the Houston Texans, who we all know made one of the most boneheaded trades I've ever seen. You know, their toughest games this year at home against the Chiefs, um, at Indianapolis, and at Houston, I guess. Home against the Cowboys, maybe. Um, at Philadelphia, not too far away from them. It, it, their schedule looks pretty good to me. Uh, they should win three out of uh, five of those, in my opinion. And that's the hardest they have, really. Uh, the Ravens' power offense uh, features running backs Mark Ingram, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, and now J.K. Dobbins. Holy cow. I mean, they can suffer two injuries and be fine there. Um, Dobbins was uh, he I, he was probably my second favorite back coming into this draft. Um I don't see any chinks in this armor. I, I don't. And the biggest issue I have with the Ravens is that I'm scared that the Tennessee Titans might have exposed a weakness in Lamar Jackson's game. I don't know if they... I, I try to think back, and I didn't see a lot of other teams play them the way the Titans played them in the playoffs, but you know that Harbaugh is going to work on that. So when I say weakness, <laughs> nothing that they might not overcome, but having that pass game suffered by throwing outside when they took the middle of the field away, you know, the down and out routes uh, was a little bit harder on Lamar Jackson. So I wonder if the teams kind of know to take the middle away and challenge him a little bit more. Don't go at him. Maybe just contain him, make him uh, a little bit nervous in the pocket. If he escapes, escapes the pocket, he usually kicks your ass. I wonder if the formula is out on this team. That's my only fear, but I gotta tell you, this team is poised to get a ton of wins. And I hate to say it, but I have them at 13.75 wins. All right. 13.75 when the over under uh, in wins, the win total is 11.5. That's normally a bet for me. I mean, it's over the 1.5, but I'm just. I just don't bet over 11.5. That's my problem. So you start out with their 2019 record, 14 wins. Their Pythag was 13.4, highest of all teams as well. Average is out 13.7. I'll take a game away for them not being injured. But their schedule last year was medium easy, take a half game. Their schedule this year is easy, add a game back. 
Uh, key losses, not much. I took away a quarter of a game in key additions, draft free agency, plus uh, three quarters, in my opinion. Um, I think they netted a half game better from what they lost and what they uh, achieved. It's not like they're getting old. Lamar Jackson's young, you know? And so their Vegas win total sitting at 11.5, and mine's, you know, about 13.5. So <laughs> 13.75. So I just don't know how I could bet um, the under. There's no way I would do that. And this team, I have a strong lean to the over, but I haven't pulled the trigger yet. So just want to let you know, I'm once again high um, on the Baltimore Ravens from what they did last year. The next team we have are the Pittsburgh Steelers. Vegas win total, 9.5, juice to the under, minus 140. So people are hitting the under there. So it's really minus, uh, sorry, not minus, it's about 9.2. Their schedule is medium easy. Their at-large games are against Buffalo and Tennessee. Um, Key losses, defensive tackle Javon Hargrave, quarterback or cornerback B.J. Finney, inside linebacker Tyler Matakovic, free safety Sean Davis, cornerback Artie Burns, new additions, Free safety, Minka Fitzpatrick in that trade. Uh, tight end, Eric Ebron. Fullback, Derek Watt. Guard, Steven Wisniewski. Who they drafted, they didn't have a first round because they got Minka Fitzpatrick from the Dolphins. They had to give that up. They got Chase Claypool uh, from Notre Dame and a bunch of, hmm. <laughs> when I say, hmm, I don't know who these guys are. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I might know a few of them, but uh, I didn't think they really uh, did a ton in college, in my opinion. The Steelers, obviously, Big Ben, right? They lost them. Um, their schedule, pretty easy to get those eight wins last year. Playing teams like Cincinnati uh, and Cleveland twice definitely helped them. But the fact that they overachieved so much in their wins... I only give them two games, right? Because uh, I think they should have done a little worse. If you look at their Pythagorean win total, it was a little bit lower, 7.6. And they, what, what really kept this team in was their defense. And they obviously had a pretty easy schedule last year. So looking at my power ratings, I had them minus a point under the average team, so they probably should have got seven wins. The only pickups that I like here are Eric Ebron and tight end, um, which is uh, kind of going to be a good scapegoat for Big Ben, although it's not like they threw to Vance McDonald all that much. Uh, he's kind of there too. And free safety, Minka Fitzpatrick, right? So the rest I'm not blown away by. I think it's cool that Derek Watt is going to be joining his brother TJ, former Badgers, but let's face it. He's a fullback. <laughs> you know, it's not going to move the needle. Uh, Minka was a big name in college. He did pretty well also in uh, for what he had in, in Miami. He was surrounded by no talent. Pretty much came from no talent <laughs> from that from that team. But uh, uh, he's. We'll see what happens here. The, the Steelers. Not many draft picks can't really reward them. But even after all that. I still have the Steelers at 9.1 wins. <laughs> so almost right at the number. Steelers had eight wins last year, 7.6 Pythag, so 7.8. I got to give them a game and a half back for Big Ben. He's getting a little bit old, but he's still Big Ben and probably was worth a game and a half over those uh, uh, other quarterbacks, Mason Rudolph and uh, was it Hodges. So it's fair schedules kind of cancel each other out medium easy last year medium easy this year i'm not only going to take away a game for who they lost i did like hargrave a lot um quarterback bj finney um and i think the linebacker there mac mac matakovich and uh Artie burns at cornerback and uh i'm going to give them 0.75 back for who they got i like minka fitzpatrick and tight end uh eric ebron but nothing that blows you away it almost kind of washed each other out but because of this brings me to 9.1 so unfortunately there is no play right there next team we're going to look at is the cleveland browns 
All right, Vegas win total, 8.5, juice to the over. So 8.75 at-large games versus the New York Jets and the Las Vegas Raiders. Key losses, inside linebacker Joe Schobert, free safety Eric Murray, inside linebacker Christian Kirksey, and safety Justin Burns. All right, so key additions. Coach Kevin Stefanski tackled Jake Conklin from Tennessee, tight end Austin Hooper, quarterback Case Keenum, cornerback Kevin Johnson, defensive tackle Andrew Billings, inside linebacker B.J. Goodson, strong safety Anderson Deho, and a bunch of others who they drafted. Tackle Jedrick Wills from Bama, probably my best tackle in the draft, safety Grant Delpit, safety, uh, or sorry, defensive lineman Jordan Elliott, Linebacker, Jacob Phillips. Remember the time I questioned Cleveland for trading Odell Beckham when they, for Odell Beckham when they already were loaded at wide receiver and had a terrible offensive line? Well, that's why I was fading Cleveland last year. So it was, uh, it, it was a stupid move, but that does not mean those six wins that trans, uh, transpired from it will come into fruition this year. It's a new year, and I'm impressed by what this team accomplished in the offseason. Very impressed. The signing of Jake Conklin and Austin Hooper was fantastic. All right, Quarterback Case Keenum is a good insurance policy. The biggest question is, will Kevin Stefanski adapt to his new promotion at head coach? on kind of a shortened year, shortened preseason, I should say. I personally like the hire, and I think this team wanted change. I also like the fact that this team um, will be improved, and Baker Mayfield has said in himself he's going to shut the hell up. It's all about his actions and not his words. I think he's growing up. I have Cleveland at 9.2 wins. So, 9.2 wins is not a play on 8.5 juice to the over. But I have a play for you. And that is that the Cleveland Browns will win their conference at plus 565. And I'm also playing that they take second place at plus 200. It tells you everything you need to know with the juice to the over and the Steelers juice to the under right there. It's Cleveland's time to at least be second and push the Ravens. The biggest thing for me that makes me like the 565 too, and if you want, you can just put a half unit on the 565 to win first place in the AFC North and a full unit on Cleveland to take second at plus 200. Either way is a win, by the way. Obviously, if they take second, you just get your money Uh, one times your money rather than two since you have to take away the other bet. But Cleveland has the much easier at-large schedule playing the Jets and the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. That could factor in. They're all tied up. And the Baltimore Ravens still have to play the Patriots and the Kansas City Chiefs. And I think I uh, said Houston before. Sorry, they play the AFC South. So, no, they play the Kansas City Chiefs at large, and the Steelers don't play Tennessee at large. They play Denver. So, sorry for that misstep. But either way, the Cleveland Browns have it easier. So, I think there's a good shot at the plus 565. How much you want to make a bet I can throw a football over the mountains? Next team we have the lowly Cincinnati Bengals. Their Vegas win total is 5.5. Schedule is medium, and it's because they don't get to play themselves. Their at-large games are against an improving Miami and a lowly Chargers team from L.A. Key losses, quarterback Andy Dalton, tackle Cordy Glenn, Tyler Eifert on tight end, uh, guard John Miller, free safety Clayton uh, Fedgleman, and inside linebacker Nick Vigil. I also see uh, Andrew Billings. I'll throw him in there. Defensive tackle Andrew Billings. Key additions. Defensive tackle DJ Reader. Cornerback Trey Waynes. Sa- strong safety Von Bell. Guard Xavier Suofilo. Cornerback Mackenzie Alexander. And inside linebacker Josh Burns. Who they drafted? 
<laughs> obviously, quarterback Joel Burrow, wide receiver T. Higgins, linebacker Logan Wilson. This team did underachieve last year because their Pythagorean wins were actually 4.2, or 4.3, sorry, and they only won two games here. So looking at this team, Joe Burrow, right? Best quarterbacking job I've ever seen in college in one year. I think a lot of it had to do with his offensive coordinator, Joe Brady. Either way, I still think the jury's still out on Zach Taylor, but I do think that Andy Dalton wasn't nearly as bad as people think. I think his team sucked around him. No A.G. Green. Bad management at Cincinnati. There was bad management. And I also think that uh, you know a little change uh, hopefully will get them some swag by drafting Joe Burrow. Um, I also like how they got two secondary uh, players from Minnesota and Trey Waynes and Mackenzie Alexander. I thought that was a good move to change their defense, and hopefully it'll change the culture there. I also like DJ Reader and Josh Burns. The Bengals, two wins last year. It just doesn't tell the whole story. It doesn't. I mean, they didn't fix their offensive line. They had major injuries there. You know, my biggest problem maybe is them not fixing their offensive line. They're kind of like the Chicago Bears there, you know? I mean, sure, they drafted Joe Burrow, and he's a little bit elusive, but is he pro-speed elusive? He was at LSU, but is he elusive for the NFL with the hash marks closer to the middle of the field, you know? I mean, they lost Cordy Glenn. They ranked 30th, their offensive line, in pro football focus, 30th. I think they missed out on that opportunity to improve. That's kind of my big thing. I think they're kind of going to be the Cleveland Browns of last year with the hype. Um, and I, I don't, I, I, I'm not sure if they're hyped yet, but it kind of feels like it, it will be from some people because of Joe, Joe Burrow. But in saying that, my season win total number is 5.2. So being that it's 4.5, it's not a play. They had two wins last year. Pythag was 4.3, so I'll average it out to 3.2. And remember, I average it because uh, Pythag tells you probably where you should have been for the amount of points you scored and gave up, but the wins were just kind of luck of the draw. And uh, there's some clutch factor into that too, the win part, so I do average it. Um, I'm going to give them a couple points back because they were very injured last year. A couple games back. I'm giving them two games back. Dalton didn't even play the whole season. you got to expect Burrow to be uh, better than their backup was. Uh, strength of schedule was medium last year, zero. Medium this year, zero. Key losses, I'll, I'll take out a game and a quarter for their key losses because uh, Andy Dalton, Cordy Glenn, and all those people were significant to me. Um, but uh, their draft and free agency – is uh, 1.75. I, I do like the addition of uh, Joe Burrow and uh, some of those guys that I mentioned earlier that they got uh, in free agency, uh, especially defensive tackle D DJ Reader and the cornerback uh, Trey Waynes, strong safety Von Bell, uh, Mackenzie Alexander. I like those guys a lot. And part of the two games I gave back, like I said, was also AJ Green. So looking at the win total, it comes up to 5.7. Not a play for me at 5.5. Very slight lean to the over. If anything, not touching it. All right. Well, that brings us to the AFC South 2020 season win totals. The AFC South, they say last but not least. Not in this case. And I see least because it's just this division is confusing very confusing lots of high variances possible outcomes in my opinion just which who's going to show up who's not um somehow last year they achieved two playoff teams and their schedule was supposed to be hard last year if you remember talking about season win totals uh, teams like the texans had the hardest and they still made the playoffs so um let's not forget the whole andrew luck thing that was thrown right in our face before the start of the season, kind of blowing some of uh, my, my bets for me. But uh, either way, he retired 
and it changed the whole uh, division, yet they still got two teams in the playoffs, which is pretty dang impressive here. Um, I think that this year, their schedule looks medium easy. They have to play the NFC North, which is medium. I mean, you got the Bears there are just lethargic on offense lately, and you got the Lions there, the Lions, the Vikings, I think, take a step back, but the Packers are the Packers, and you have the AFC North, which is, like I said, easier from what I just went over. Um, they had some struggling teams as last year. Looking at the AFC North, Pittsburgh's not going to show much offense. It'll just be Baltimore, really. That's tough. Cleveland, I think, like I said before, will be the second best team there. Could make the playoffs, but you still have Pittsburgh's lowly offense and uh, the Cincinnati Bengals there. And we'll see what happens here. It's a, it's really interesting, and that's why I think there's a lot of variance. Will the Bears come back? Will the Vikings still be good? Will the Packers even be better with a chip on Aaron Rodgers' shoulder for the love bet? I think the AFC South can finish in a lot of different ways. The Houston Texans is the game or the team we are going to start with. Vegas win total is 7.5. Schedule medium hard at large games versus New England and Kansas City. Key losses, wide receiver, DeAndre Hopkins. Defensive tackle, DJ Reader. Running back, Carlos Hyde. Cornerback, Jonathan Joseph. Outside linebacker, Barcavius Mingo. Key additions, running back, David Johnson. Tight end, Darren Fells. Wide receiver, Randall Cobb. Free safety, Eric Murray. And cornerback, Jalen Watkins. Who they drafted? Defensive line, Ross Blaylock. Edge, Jonathan Greenard. Offensive tackle, Charlie Heck. Remember that time when Houston blew a 24 to 3 point lead in the playoffs last year in the first half against the Kansas City Chiefs? I don't I don't remember that because I refused to play that garbage in my head over and over again. <laughs> I think Bill O'Brien might be the worst coach in football, the worst head coach in my opinion. It just he just bugs me. His decisions, his clock management, his trades, trading DeAndre Hopkins for a injury prone David Johnson. I'm sorry. I'm just beating the hell out of a dead horse. I won't stop. I just can't stop thinking of it. <laughs> but the one thing that they still have is Deshaun Watson. And that man is extremely talented. Extremely. He's just got to stop getting hit so much. I'm concerned that J.J. Watt's getting a little older. I'm concerned that they did not replace their pass rush loss with Jim Davian Clowney properly. Their at-large games are against New England and Kansas City. They should split that. At least they get the Patriots at home, so that's probably a win. If they had to go to Kansas City and then, or, or go to uh, New England and then get Kansas City at home, that could be two losses. But I expect one. I expect a losses against Cleveland. I expect losses against Baltimore at Chicago. I expect a loss and at home against Green Bay. That's for sure. Right? Was that six right there? Their win total is 7.5. This team's Pythagorean win total last year was only 7.8. They had 10 wins last year and they were only at 7.8. Wow, that's some serious overachieving. And uh, when I saw this win total at 7.5, I was like, holy smokes, why is it not higher? I wanted to bet the under in this team, and now I can't because my number is only 7.4. Here's how I got there. Texans, 10 wins. Pythag, 7.8. Averages to 8.9. I'm not going to give them or take away anything for uh, injuries or age from last year. Um Medium hard schedule last year, so give them a half game back. Medium easy this year, give them uh, take away a half game. Key losses minus two, and I'm being very generous there because Hopkins was just that dang good. Uh, I'll give them back a half game. That's it in drafting free agency, and I am at seven point four wins. One thing I would feel more confident about confident about is them not winning the division. So I'm going to look at the price on the no that they don't win the division. But like I said, Deshaun Watson certainly covers all the problems of his current head coach. You know, he kind of kind of covers it up. So 
that's an issue too. Tennessee Titans, Vegas win total 8.5. Schedule easy at large games versus Buffalo and Denver. Key losses, right tackle Jake Conklin, quarterback Marcus Mariota, cornerback LaShawn Sims, defensive tackle Austin Johnson, tight end Delaney Walker. Key additions, edge Vic Beasley, cornerback Jonathan Joseph, tackle Ty Sembralo, uh, defensive tackle Jack Crawford, and a bunch of dudes. So they picked up a lot. Uh, who they drafted, tackle Isaiah Wilson, cornerback Christian Fulton, and just a few other guys. The Titans moved a lot of side to side, in my opinion. Kind of like they lost some players um, and just try to kind of tape it up here a little bit. Picked up a tackle in Sombrello. Um, Mariota's gone, obviously, but they gave a big contract to Tannehill. Uh, drafted Christian Fulton when they lost LaShawn Sims. Kind of kind of side to side there. Um, and I don't know if Delaney Walker is going to come back. I, I don't know if he's going to get a deal done. I have to assume that he doesn't for now. But my big problem with this Titans team is that they really didn't have enough to put him over the hump, right? Uh, they didn't. I, I, it was, I mean, what a great run. They took people by surprise and just, Henry just bowled through the line, right? He bowled through people. I mean, when you can do that and not be stopped, you should win all your dang games. Runs the clock out, takes the offensive away from the other team. Your cornerbacks and uh, secondary can kind of sit back a little bit, you know, kind of like bend, not break type thing. <laughs> it's huge to have a good running game. And that's what it was, but... I just don't like the fact that they didn't try to get themselves a George Kittle. With a power run team like that, you need a tight end to kind of bail your quarterback out. Um, I do give a ton of credit to Ryan Tannehill. He's better than I thought, better than we all thought. Huge credit to that guy. But he's still not at the Lamar Jackson, Russell Wilson, or Patty Mahomes level. And I also don't like losing Jake Conklin right tackle to Cleveland. So I expect a similar season from last year, but just not enough to get them over the hump. Um, and there's more wear and tear on Derrick Henry. I think he had like over 330 carries or something crazy like that. Really high. I got the Titans at nine wins. Tennessee, nine wins last year, 9.9 Pythag. So they underachieved, believe it or not, 9.5. I averaged it to. But they were really healthy. I'll take away a half game for that. Um, strength schedule was easy. Take away a game for that, but it's easy again at plus one, you know, pretty easy schedule. I'll take away a game who they lost in free agency, but I'll give them it right back from that side to side movement, uh, from the draft and free agency. And that puts me right back to nine wins. So being that the wind tolls 8.5, that's no play for me. Give a slight lean to the over. The Indianapolis Colts Vegas win total is nine. Schedule is medium easy at large games versus the Jets and Oakland. Key losses, tight end Eric Ebron, cornerback Pierre Desir, wide receiver Devin Funches, who didn't play that much anyway, tackle Joel Haig, key additions quarterback Phillip Rivers, cornerback Xavier Rhodes, defensive tackle Sheldon Day, right tackle uh, LaRaven Clark, who they drafted, wide receiver Michael Pittman, running back Jonathan Taylor out of Wisconsin. And when you say Wisconsin, you've said it all. Safety, Julian Blackman, quarterback, Jacob Eason. Summary, there are a lot of people high on this Colts team this year. For me, I'm a bit more skeptical. Might they win the division? Sure. And when I say skeptical, I'm just not high on them. I'm just judging them for being high on them. I think I'm medium on them, probably. Last year, start out bad. Andrew Luck retired right before the season started. A lot of scrutiny in that. My opinion stays the same. You should have told, retired before that, you know, unless you got a serious additional injury that you didn't have before. You know, it was really strange seeing him hike in mountains right after he retired. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm bitter. This, in my opinion, is factored into the uh, Colts season last year, right? Um, so it's not like you can do anything about Andrew Luck. 
Um, seven wins they had on an easy schedule last year. So that's not a good thing. Now Vegas has this team winning the NFC South. <laughs> you know? So uh, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. Obviously, Phillip Rivers is a big addition and an upgrade from Jacoby Brissett. But how much of an upgrade is he? I mean, he's old. He tends to play well only at the end of games, right? You see him just get his ass kicked, and all of a sudden he's good. He's kind of got that little bit of a, I guess Dak Prescott has a little bit of Phillip Rivers in him since Phillip's been around more, but that's kind of the same thing that these quarterbacks do. I also wonder how big of it is an upgrade when you talk about the fact that Rivers is not going to get a lot of reps in the offseason due to the COVID-19 pandemic, right? Don't we have to take a look at that? The COVID-19 pandemic? <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely got to take a look at that. You know, I think the team overall did a good job in free agency to patch up the defense. I think they did a good job. You know, guys like Rhodes, Sheldon Day, or even Clark. But what I'm concerned about is them losing Eric Ebron, right? Their tight end, he's damn good. And they're just kind of settled with Jack Doyle. You know, injury prone Jack Doyle. And then they sign head case Trey Burton, who gets nervous before games from the Chicago Bears. He allegedly gets nervous. He gets nervous. So my win total is 8.9. And the Vegas win total is 9. So it's unfortunately not another play there. Show you how I got to 9. Seven wins last year. Their Pythag was 7.7. Average that to a 7.4. No injury adjustment, really, uh, because they're just kind of swapping quarterbacks there, and they should have had a little bit of an upgrade uh, on that one. Their strength of schedule was easy last year. Take away a game. Their strength of schedule this year is also easy, so we will give them back a game. Looking at... Key losses, I would say that you take away a half game for some of those guys that I went over, and but I do like what they picked up. So I'm giving them two full uh, points on that. I like their draft a little bit, and I like some of the guys they picked up. Uh, and the only thing, like I said, they missed out on was a uh, tight end there. So that brings me to pretty much 8.9 wins. So... Going to have to stay away from this one, and uh, we'll just see if Philip Rivers can resurrect them and do what everybody's you know thinking that he's going to do by winning this division here. So no play on the Colts. Last and definitely least, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> Win total is at 4.5. Their schedule is medium. At large versus, nope, it's the at large versus the Miami Dolphins and the LA Chargers. Key losses. Tackle Cedric Agobahi, quarterback Nick Foles, defensive end Calais Campbell, Wide receiver Marquise Lee, key additions, inside linebacker Joe Schobert, defensive line Rodney Gunter, tight end Tyler Eifert, defensive tackle Al Woods, cornerback Rashawn Melvin, running back Chris Thompson, outside linebacker Aaron Lynch. A lot of good ones there. Well, oh, okay, so let me rephrase that. A lot of, lot of pretty good players there. Uh, I'm not going to say... Nothing too exciting. Who they drafted? Quarterback C.J. Henderson, Edge, Kilavion, Chasen, wide receiver, LaVisca Chenault, defensive line, Davon, Hamilton. Summary. You know, I really want, I really want to think this Jaguars team um, is undervalued with such a low win total of 4.5, but I, I just don't know. It feels like they have a lot of no names there, nothing big. Sure, they picked up some guys that you kind of, you know, they paid some people, Schobert, um, but how good was Schobert really? How good was Roddy Gunter? Tyler Eifert was always injured. You know, Reshawn Melvin is more of a name now, in my opinion. 
Aaron Lynch. Yeah, you know, pretty good. All right, but nothing, nothing gets you too exciting, right? I mean, their wide receivers, DJ Chark, you know, Conley. The good news is that this team finished the season well, right? Um, they won two of their last three games, but I still have some major questions. And the first one is about the quarterback and uh, the mustache, Gardner Minshew. He feels more like a gimmick to me at this point. And I always said that he didn't play in an NFL-style offense under Mike Leach at Washington State. So I think, you know, he might have even overachieved last year. And if the and if he does bad this year, it's going to be kaputs for him. They did get rid of Nick Foles, obviously, so no safety net there. I don't like how they still have a bad offensive line, only ranking 26th in pro football focus, and they didn't address it, right? Um, the team Pythagorean wasn't too bad at 5.3 last year, and... Uh, the transitions hurt them. A lot, a lot of people were higher on the Jags last year. I think their season win total was 7.5 or 8, but they obviously didn't achieve that. I actually think that uh, their schedule is medium, but it's manageable. But my win total on them is 5.2. I only see four games that they should win for sure on their schedule, and that's versus the Lions uh, at home, then at Cincinnati maybe, at L.A. Chargers, maybe. The Steelers and Dolphins at home are kind of coin flips. So I think they win four of those easiest games, four out of five. The rest looks really like losses to me. So um, I guess since I'm at 5.2, I would have to have a small lean to the over. But one thing's for sure. Doug Marone is going to have the same fate as Garner, the mustache, Minshew. And unfortunately, we may not see any more Uncle Rico references. Kills. I reckon you know a lot about cyberspace. You, you ever come across anything like time travel? So I have this total at 5.2. I got there six wins last year. 5.3 Pythag is a 5.7. In, uh, injured player, I'm gonna I'm gonna take away a half game because they weren't really injured. <laughs> You know, they're just pretty inexperienced. They were pretty healthy, I thought, last year, actually. Maybe Marquise Lee, but he's not like he's coming back. Uh, strength of schedule was medium easy last year at minus 0.5. Got to take a, punish them for that a little bit. Uh, medium this year, no, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Key losses, I'll take away a half game for who they lost, and all the guys they signed, I'll give them a game back. Brings me to 5.2 wins. Nothing too exciting. But uh, when there's a team at 4.5, like you saw last year with the Dolphins, you know, the Dolphins majorly overachieved last year. If you remember, their Pythag was 3.6, but they, you know, tied their win total early at five. I believe we had five or five and a half. I can't remember, but I remember being upset because I think when I gave it out, it was at five or 4.5. That thing went all the way down to four and they somehow got five wins. So I'm never going to go under four and a half here for an NFL team, especially when the team they might be playing at the end could be tanking, um, resting their players for the playoffs. You know, they can't improve their seed. That happens a lot. So uh, uh, I'm going to stay away from this one itself. Sorry, not a ton of action in the NFC South, but I at least wanted to break it down for you to just show you my thoughts. I have absolutely no bets right now going for this one. If you guys liked what you hear, please retweet the podcast, The Odds Breakers. Feel free to tag me at The Odds Breakers. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions, I really want to answer them. Please uh, ask me. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend. And remember, go get some wins.